Welcome to your yoga mat. Let's take a comfortable seat and close your eyes. And taking a moment to turn inward, to follow the breath and notice where there might be some constrictions, some barriers. And I don't want you to force the breath through those barriers. I just want you to notice them. It's kind of like our, our, our favorite elephant deity, Ganesh, right? He helps us with our obstacles, but not in the way like an elephant barging through. He's showing us new ways around our challenges or our obstacles. So let's see where the breath gets stuck. Notice it, and then hopefully we can come back to it later and see if that problem is solved. So when you get to your next inhale, go ahead, fill the lungs, hold the breath, and then exhale just a little and hold. Exhale a little and hold. Exhale a little, hold. Exhale the rest of the way. So I want to do a couple cycles of that because each time you hold, I'm hoping that you can embrace the silence that's going on in the body. And again, pay attention to where there might be a struggle. All right. So let's do, let's do three cycles of that on your own. When you're ready, let's inhale the arms up, bring the palms together, and release them home to your heart, Nanjali Mudra, prayer pose, where we'll pause to set our sankalpa, our intention for our practice. When you're ready, let's release our fingertips down to the earth. So fingers are going to push the ground away, get length going on there in the spine, through the back of the neck, and just turn the head to the right. Focus on the breath. And then back through center to the other side. And then bring the head back to center. Inhale the left arm up, a little side bend, so about half of what you would normally do. Take that top shoulder, gently pull it back, and then let's come back up, release the arm. Inhale, right arm up, half of the side bend to the left, Come back up, release that right arm. 
Inhale, left arm up. Side bend to the right, maybe a little bit lower. Inhale up. Exhale, arm back down. Inhale, right arm up. Exhale to the left, just a little lower. Inhale, back up. Exhale, right hand down. Again, inhale, left arm up. Exhale, take it to the right, however deep you want to go. I want to pause here. Open the top shoulder. Actively push that left hip and sit bone down into the earth. On your next inhale, use the right hand to push you back up. Exhale, left hand down. Inhale, right arm up. Take that side bend to the left. Focus on pulling the top shoulder back while we're pushing the right hip and sit bone down. And inhale, push your way up. Exhale, right hand down. Both arms, take them up with the breath. Exhale to the heart. Find your length, just in case you lost it. And let's do an upper body twist to the right. Now, keep breathing. When you get to an exhale, let's release to center. Inhale here. Exhale to the left. And when you're ready, back to center, release the palms down on top of the knees for our seated cat cow. So when you inhale, let's lift the chest, move it forward, slight arch in the low back, lift the chin. Exhale, lean back, round it all out, drop the chin. And I would encourage you to linger wherever it feels like you need to stay. Let's do one more. And then come on back up. Let's go ahead and straighten out the legs. Ah, stretch them out. Walk them out a little bit. And we'll alternate pointing and flexing the ankles. You can do one at a time. You can do both at the same time. All right. Let's plant the feet hip distance apart. Turn those fingers in towards you. Draw the shoulder blades in. We're going to lift up into tabletop. So Push the ground away, find your lift, breathing in. Exhale, slowly coming back down. Inhale, push the ground away, lift. Exhale, back down. Last one. And then from here, will you grab your two blocks? Um, like, as always, if you don't have any props, something around you that you could use, a couple of books maybe, we're going to come into Supta Baddha Konasana, so a supine cobbler. Um, I want to also grab the bolster, so bear in mind, you can do this pose without any props. However, 
Um, if the knees end up hanging in space, that's not very restorative. So if you can grab something for the legs, that would be fabulous. Okay, so I have my bolster vertically behind me. Do I need to have this? No, if you don't have one, it's okay. And then I'm gonna make a fist and I'm gonna push that bolster a fist width away from my sacrum. I'm going to plant my blocks underneath each leg. So soles of the feet together, knees go wide. Um, it's up to you how high the blocks are, right? And then let's slowly go ahead and ease on back. I would highly encourage a deep breath in and then a really loud sigh. So the reason that we moved a fist width away from the bolster, because oftentimes I say scooch all the way back to the bolster, is just to give the low back some grace. So while you're there, close your eyes. I'm going to tell you a story. It's about a raven. Um, this raven is sitting in a tree, and the raven is very sad. and. He's crying, and he's got tears running down his black feathers. And unbeknownst to him, seated beneath him against the tree is this monk. And the monk feels these teardrops landing on him. And he looks up and he sees the raven. And he says, you know, what's the matter, my friend? What's, what's the problem? And the raven says, um, that he's just, he's just very sad. He feels like nobody likes him. That when a raven flies near somebody, he's always shooed away. And um, he reckons that he would be much happier if he were not a raven. And so the monk says, okay, I understand what has moved you to tears, but what kind of bird do you think you know, is the happiest bird on the planet. What bird would you want to be? And the raven says, oh, I think a swan is the happiest bird on the planet. I would want to be a swan. And the monk says, well, I have the power to transform you into a swan. However, what you have to do first is you have to go find a swan and you have to ask it if it's happy. Raven's like, I got this, right? Raven takes off and not far down finds a swan in a little pond, lands next to her and says, you're so beautiful. You're so beautiful. I need to know if you're the happiest bird on the planet. And the swan says, I, I'm sorry to tell you, my, my heart is so sad. I am not happy. I am, I'm all white. I'm devoid of any color whatsoever. I, there's nothing cheerful about me. And no, I, I think the happiest bird on the planet is a parrot with all those fabulous colors. And so the raven thinks about this and then he flies off to find a parrot. Having found one, he lands next to the parrot and says, you are so beautiful, all those colors. I'm curious how happy you are. And the parrot says, I wish I could tell you that I was happy. Um, unfortunately, because of all my colors, people like to cage parrots. And that makes me really sad. Um, and so no, I, I'm, I'm not a happy bird. And the raven says, well, what bird do you think is the happiest on the planet? And the parrot says, I've thought a lot about this, and I think it's a peacock because they have much, more, their colors are more beautiful than mine. So the raven takes to the air until he finds a peacock. And <clears throat> turns out that this peacock is in a zoo, and there are like hundreds of people around his exhibit, looking at his beautiful feathers and his beautiful colors. And 
when the people all leave, the raven flies in and says, you are amazing. Your feathers are beautiful. I, I'm curious if you're the happiest bird on the planet. And the peacock says, I'm afraid not. I'm afraid I might be the saddest. Um, because of my beauty, I'm often trapped in zoos and cages and people pluck out my feathers to use as decoration and it hurts and it, it is painful to my heart. And so the raven says, what bird do you think is the happiest on the planet? And the peacock says, you know, I've seen a lot of birds in the zoo, a lot of birds, but there's only one that I've never seen in a caged exhibit. And that would be you. I've never seen a raven in a cage. And I think that you must be the happiest bird on the planet because you're free. And the raven really thought about this and took back to the air and felt happy, felt joyful, flew back to the monk and said, you know what? I don't need you to change me into a swan. I am, I'm good. I'm fine the way I am. Um, yeah, I'm good. And the moral of course of this story is that when we, when we start comparing ourselves to other people, especially their outward appearance where we think they're happier, or we think they're better off, it is often not the case. And it is in the comparing that we create our unhappiness. So I'm gonna let that story sink in for a moment. We'll come back around a little bit to it and I'm gonna add a poem on top. All right, let's take a deep breath in and hold it. Let it go. And I'm just gonna bring my right knee up toward the ceiling. I'm planting the right foot on the mat. And then we'll let that right knee journey all the way over to end up on top of the left leg. So a very gentle twist here. Alter the height of the block if you need to. You can remove it completely, it's up to you. When you're ready, let's reopen the right leg, take it all the way over, and then we'll let the left knee slowly follow.
and then we'll bring both knees back to center both feet planted on the earth I want to lift the head and shoulders and just reach the hands forward to grab onto the knees so just rounding out the upper back tuck the chin And then I'm also going to use my hands on my knees as leverage to pull myself the rest of the way up. From there, let's move the bolster. We'll come back to it. <clears throat> and let's go ahead and stretch out the right leg. Let's pull that left knee in. If you want your knee resting on the block, you could keep that there. I don't have an issue with that. And then sit up really tall. And let's just hinge forward a little bit. So I don't want you to round out to come down. We're just hinging forward. Stop when you feel the stretch. Just pause right there. Deepen the breath. When you feel the hamstring loosen up, maybe you come a little deeper. Just walk the hands all the way back up the right leg. The left knee coming back up. We're going to hug it with the right elbow. Flex that front foot. Left hand behind you. Find your length. And then exhale. Very peaceful twist to the left. When you're ready, release the twist. Stretch out that left leg, draw the right leg in. Don't let the knee fall open. Use your block if you used it on the other side. Sit up tall. And again, just start meandering into wherever this fold is gonna lead you into that first edge of the stretch. And then I like to move there when I hit it, just to loosen things up. And we'll just keep coming down as we each see fit. And then again, use the hands to walk up the leg. Pull that right knee in. Left elbow in front, right hand behind. Flex the foot. Sit up tall with the breath. Exhale to the right. When you're ready, release that twist. All right, let's go ahead and come all the way back. We're gonna hug the knees into the heart, rock this out here for a moment. And then I'm just gonna push my thighs away from me till they're perpendicular between the floor and the ceiling. Shins will be parallel to the earth, feet are flexed. Draw the stomach in, so tighten up the core, low back down. All right, let's tap that right heel down. Bring it back up. Left heel down. Bring it back up. You got it. Keep the core tight, keep the low back down. Movement matches your breath. The farther out you take the heel, the harder this is going to be. You do you, just make sure we're not arching the low back.
Let's do one more each side. And then we'll hug the knees and rock it out. All right, <clears throat> let's set the feet down and roll onto a side. In a fetal position, make yourself comfortable. Grab a prop for your head if you want to. We're gonna hang here for a little bit while I read you that poem I was telling you about. So this poem is called Solitude by Ella Wheeler Wilcox. And I'm guessing the first part is going to sound very familiar to you. It goes like this. Laugh and the world laughs with you. Weep and you weep alone. For the sad old earth must borrow its mirth, but has trouble enough of its own. Sing and the hills will answer. Sigh, it's lost on the air. The echoes bound to a joyful sound, but shrink from voicing care. Rejoice and men will seek you. Grieve and they turn and go. They want full measure of all your pleasure, but they do not need your woe. Be glad and your friends are many, be sad and you lose them all. There are none to decline your nectared wine, but alone you must drink life's gall. Feast and your halls are crowded. Fast and the world goes by. Succeed and give and it helps you live, but no man can help you die. There is room in the halls of pleasure for a large and lordly train. But one by one, we must all file on through the narrow aisles of pain. So, really cheery poem, but I, you know, you knew I started off with a story about a crying bird, for God's sake. So you knew that the theme wasn't going to be super cheerful. However, there's always an uptake, isn't there? We'll get to it. All right. So, go ahead and push your way up. I want to grab, hmm, I don't see mine any, oh yes I do. I'm gonna grab my blanket. You grab yours. I forgot it was cold down here and I had it over on my chair. All right. Um, I'm not really concerned about it being rolled or folded in any certain way. I want it to be enough support to go under your left side. So I have the blanket to my left hip and I'm going to come down onto my left side. So this blanket in particular is very thin. It's not like my other one. So I'm actually going to double this over. I really want to feel it holding me up. So when you're ready. And then the left arm that you're balancing on, push the ground away. We don't want to sink into that. We're going to push it away, kind of like Sphinx pose, but we're on our side, right? So elevated, get a stretch going down the left side. Close your eyes for a moment, deepen the breath. We'll do a little bit of playing here. If this isn't comfortable for you, you can always come down a little bit more, right? Okay. So let's go ahead and bring that right knee in. I'm going to use my right hand to grab onto the shin. I'm still going to try to push the earth away. Draw that knee in. Deep in the breath. Embrace the wobbling. If you roll over, you roll over. Get back up on your side. Let's flex the right foot. Grab on somewhere, wherever you can manage. And let's just 
see where the leg wants to go. It doesn't have to straighten, so maybe it goes about here. That's fine if that's where you feel it, right? We're just playing. We're enjoying wobbling, seeing if we can keep our balance. And then re-bend the knee. You can let go of the foot if you want to. We're going to grab on again, so it's up to you. I'm going to let the knee fall forward as I grab onto the front of the ankle. And that way I can swing the foot behind me. Let's try to line up the thighs. So hips are moving forward. You should feel this in the right quad. Deepen the breath. Be careful. Listen to that right knee. I'm going to escort the right foot to come in front of my left thigh. Push up, lengthen a little bit. So this is even a lazier lizard, right? Because usually we're perched on the left hand here. And then I'm going to take my right hand. I'm going to bring it around in front of me, kind of over by my left hand. That hand's gonna move, so I'm just going to add a little twist here. You can sink down into this if you want to. And then let's just come on back to where we started. Let's get the legs on top of each other. Gently push your way up so we can switch directions or you're floating over while well, I switch directions all right ah, coming down supporting the right side with that blanket stretch out the legs push the ground away with the supporting arm close your eyes And then keep that support you have as you draw that left knee in. Use your left hand on the shin. Flex the foot, grab on somewhere, and we'll see where that leg wants to journey to. You're not holding the breath, are you? And then as I re-bend this leg, I'm still hanging on, but I'm gonna let my hand come to the front of the ankle. I'm gonna line up my thighs and my knees and pull this foot in behind me. Hips move forward. Remember we started out by seeing where the breath was gonna get stuck. Holy moly, this quad is really tight. Work with that. Let that be your experience. Don't force it, right? And then let's help this foot come around in front of the bottom leg. A very lazy lizard. Push the ground away. Close your eyes. And then left hand to the mat over where the right hand is. I'm just gonna shift that arm back, just a really gentle twist here. And then as I free that top leg, I'm gonna turn over onto my stomach. Now for me, this blanket's gonna be too high, so I'm gonna unfold it a little bit. Let's get that blanket under the hips. Ah. Come on down, close your eyes. All right, so the poem, Solitude, is about how everybody 
experiences sadness or troubles at some point. And while we might have support around us, we still have to go through it on our own, right? So that's what that poem was talking about. But what I think is the uplifting part, remember I said there would be an uptake here. Think about the raven. He's on his tree branch, he's crying. He's comparing himself to other birds. He doesn't like being shooed away. The part about not liking being shooed away is valid, right? That's how he feels. That's valid. It's where he starts comparing himself to the other birds that creates his sadness. And by the time we get to the end of that story, the sadness is gone, right? He flies away from the peacock, he's happy, he's joyful, he's free. And so it's a good reminder that sadness and other feelings in those, that category are temporary. pull up that last line of the poem real quick but one by one we must all file on right that's the part about none of us are immune to life's pain sorrows frustrations whatever stressors but we keep going on the path we have to file on we all keep going on this path wherever we're at on the path right we're all different places I want you to picture Ganesh, right? The elephant deity who helps us with our challenges and our obstacles by showing us what we're missing, giving us new perspective. And so in a way, if you go back to the story about the raven, you could almost kind of imagine that Ganesh is behind the scenes, right? Go ask the next bird, go ask the next one. Instead of going straight from I want to be something different and the monk snapping its fingers and, and it is so, right? And so finding new ways to address these, these ideas, these thoughts, these comparisons, because perhaps they're not true. Take a deep breath in, let it go. We're almost at Shavasana, but let's move a little bit here. Go ahead and plant your hands. Let's push our way up into the table. And you can move that blanket aside. Not for long, we really are very close to Shavasana, I promise. Find your cat cow. Again, linger where you want to linger. And when you're ready, let's come back to a neutral spine, tuck the toes, and let's find Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. out the back, separate the shoulder blades, lift the heels and then gently drop the knees back to the earth but take them wide will you so we can come on down into Balasana, child's pose.
When you're ready, walk the hands in. Let's draw the legs together, knees together. Tip the hands behind you. Start to lean back into the fingertips and we're just gonna lift the shins off the mat for an ankle stretch. Deep breath in. As you exhale, gently set the legs back down. I'm gonna stay tipped backwards into my hands though. Once my legs touch down, I'm going to just lift the heart. Big breath here. And then we'll push our way back up. And now you know what time it is. I said we were close, didn't I? All right, grab your props for Shavasana. Put them however you see fit. And then do a little wiggling, make sure the entire body is supported, peaceful, still. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, one more, inhale, hold the breath. Let it go.
and keeping your eyes closed, I want you to visualize that raven in the sky, carefree, wings spread wide, wind rippling through the feathers. Watch the raven as though it's for a dance. His movement. I want you to feel his happiness. Perhaps you'll you'll feel it when he turns and lifts up into the sky and then he looks down and his whole body follows suit. He kind of swoops down around the grass and around the trees and just embrace that feeling of being carefree. And if you'd rather, you could imagine that you're the raven, that you're the one doing the swooping in the breeze and soaring and just being curious with this new set, this new found perspective. And now when you're ready, let him go. Take a deep breath in. Big exhale. Take your time inviting some movement back into the body. When you're ready, go ahead and turn to a side, back to a fetal position. And then let's slowly make our way back up. Inhaling through the nose. Cleansing exhale through the mouth. Slowly take both arms up. The palms will find each other and then you can float them back down to your heart. The light in me bows to the light in you. And when I'm in that place in me and you're in that place in you, then we become one. Namaste. Namaste.